the trench. It'll lead you to the rendezvous. Roll, my friend. There you have it, huh? Ah, fate's a bastard. I'm on patrol tonight, then. Said Avi. out of here. Get you back to safety. Just hold on to me. of July, 1700 hours. I'm in a state of agony. It cripples my body, captures my mind, bleeds my soul. This thing I have done, this thing, this thing. It is lunch in the mess hall currently. Oh, the thought of eating repulses me. Hello. Is there someone there? 
I am over here. Oh. <laughs> Thought I was the last one. We're trapped down here. The rat fucking officers ran and blew the exit behind them. You want to escape. You need to blow it back open. There's dynamite in the arsenal. Ah, and a handle to trigger it somewhere in the excavation site. Get them, and you can make it out. Oh, shit! That thing, it's coming for me. Here, take this. Finish me off, please. I want to die at the hands of a broader soldier, not that monster. There's ammo in the pantry. Get it. Do the job, please. Ninth of July. I do not know the time, but dusk has fallen and still, of course, no word. When I asked the sergeant, he shrugged, as if I was asking about when it might next rain. These fools around me, laughing, drinking, arguing. Do they know what I've done? Do they suspect it? I feel they must all be guilty of something. And yet, they laugh, drink, argue. God knows what I've done. I wonder if his judgment could be worse than my own. of July 1916. Dusk. I sit now at the bedside of my dear friend Henri Clément. The doctor has left, but I remain. I feel I must record the extraordinary twists of fate and fortune that have led me to be here. Breathing. Alive. Strong and well. While Henri lies unconscious. Fighting for his life. It starts days ago. On a night patrol. I fell into some kind of pit. I was injured. Unable to move. Unable to escape. By all rights, it should have been my tomb. I cried for help, screamed myself hoarse. The effort left me parched, exhausted, and still low. As the next night fell, as I cried what might have been my last cry for help, I could see the stars high, high above, beautiful, indifferent. And then Clément's face appeared at the top of the pit. He lowered himself to me found a trickle of spring water there and let me drink from it. It was cool and crisp with a strange, 
sweet taste. Never has water felt more nourishing than that. Administered by a dear friend's hand. I was saved. But of course, that is not the last twist fate's blade would stab into my back. 11th of July, 1916. Night. Later now, I continue my tale. As Clément carried me across no man's land, fate struck again. A German outpost spotted us. Gunfire, explosions, desperation. And as the air cleared, I pulled myself to my feet and saw that Henri was wounded, blood pouring from his head, his eyes glassy. He was fading. I do not know where I found the strength to carry him, but carry him I did, all the way back to our bunker. 12th July, 1916, morning. Woke this morning and realized that a toy I purchased for my son is gone. I promised him I'd bring him something home from the front, so I brought him a stuffed rabbit from a local shop. <laughs> a rabbit because he thinks he's so fast. It must have fallen from my pack when I fell into the crater. The thought of that stuffed rabbit lying in that crater, rain and weather matting its fur, unloved, forgotten, totally alone, lost forever. It fills me with profound hopelessness. 12th July, 1916, afternoon. Spoke to the doctor. He told me Henri woke in the night and had no recollection of the events in the crater. Indeed, he seemed even confused as to where he was. Aside from this disturbing news, I'm feeling rather good, stronger and stronger, as if the whole ordeal has filled both my body and soul with new purpose.
9th of July, night. My conscience compels me now, as it failed to compel me then. I must do something, even if it costs me my own life. I must do something lest I never sleep again. I must do something or risk greeting hell itself as a relief. I must do something. I go. Eighth of July, mid-afternoon. Joubert needs a scout for tonight. Routine patrol. Out to the communication wires and back. It'll be cloudy. Good cover. Easiest patrol possible. Sergeant wants me or Augustin to go. He still suspects one of us might have been with the mutineers. But I won't be going. How can I be so sure? Well, Augustin has agreed to a friendly game of chance to determine which of us it will be. And, using an old sleight of hand trick, there's no way I'll lose. <laughs> no, Augustin doesn't have a chance because I'll ensure he doesn't. Me? A scoundrel? <laughs> Perhaps. But when he returns and I remind him of the time he pissed in my flask, or the mysterious lice that appeared in my bunk, or the incident with that barmaid. <laughs> well, I laughed in those cases, and he'll laugh in this one. 8th of July, near midnight. Shelling again somewhere along the line. Them firing at us. I'm sure we will fire at them again soon. I hope Augustan's having a simply marvelous time out there. <laughs> Can't wait to tell him what I did. 9th of July, time unknown. It must be just before dawn. When the shelling stopped, I woke. The sudden silence always does that. Augustin's bunk is empty. I went looking for him. He wasn't in the mess, nor being seen by Dr. Jozinski. 
nor lurking out for a final smoke. Dax was on patrol. I asked him. He said Augustin hasn't returned from the scout. He said the words like he was pronouncing Augustin's death. As if scouts don't come running back at all hours. As if, as if it wasn't just a routine patrol. As if all hope was lost. Now the shelling is starting again. Uh, we'll try to sleep. 9th of July, morning. It has been hours now and Augustin has not returned. His luck did not hold. And neither has mine. What could I have been thinking? If he is gone forever... But I do not want to write it, for fear writing it will make it real. I will continue to wait in my bunk until dusk. And if there is no sign of him, then... Then... Then I do not know. The priest keeps staring at me, as if he can sense I have some unseen weight on me. I will not give him the satisfaction of a confession. It was nothing. A joke. I, I thought it was just a joke. I, I never thought... I, I never thought... And therein lies my sin.
12th July 1916, up again, in the chapel, trying to pray but my mind is too alive with thoughts of the crater, the rabbit, and that water, its taste, and yet I don't feel tired, instead I feel this itch, 
the sense that there are things I must do. Purpose. A bloody purpose higher than any of man's petty wars. 13th July, 1916. Morning. Everyone's talking about hearing scratching at the walls. Tremblay even claims to have heard howls echoing through the barracks. I feel strange myself. Can barely find the words to write. My hands feel so odd, gnarled, bulbous, like they don't belong to me. I hesitate to write this, but a thought keeps echoing in my head. A thought I must not act on. A bloody thought so seductive. It calls. It calls. It calls. 15th July, 1916. Madness in the barracks this morning. Renard's dead. They say murder, but will not show us the body. A dream rises in my mind. Countless cruel eyes upon me. Must check on Henri. Wish he would wake. Could use a friend. My prayers remain unanswered. 18th July, 1916. Blood on my hands. Blood on my hands. Blood on my hands. Their pain. I want more of it. I can hear Tremblay now. Coming closer. 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 I can get what I want from him. 